We've now won three out of the five trophies we need to complete the Pentagon Challenge, with only the Copa Libertadores and Champions League to go. After winning the CONCACAF Champions Cup with Club America, our time in Mexico is over. But thanks to the four years of experience and coaching courses, my manager profile is now looking stacked. And straight off the bat, we could go for the Liverpool job. However, they're currently £32 million in debt and they finished 7th in the league last season, meaning they've only qualified for the Europa Conference League. So I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I think we leave this for now because we can hold out for a better job. However, by the end of November, there isn't really anything that's catching my eye other than Independiente Medellin in Colombia. Now, more than likely, they won't be the team to win as the Copa Libertadores, but they might be a very good stepping stone. However, looking at the job, it might also be a step back from Club America, but there is no harm in applying, so I did. However, what happened next was insane. Arsenal have headhunted me to be their manager. I didn't apply for the job, the only one we've gone for is Medellin, so I am just as shocked as you guys are. My plan was always to go for the Copa Libertadores first, but I suppose we could try for the Champions League. So their new chairman welcomed me in, and by sounds of things, the job is mine if we get on. Now obviously they're concerned I've never managed in England before, so as always, I told them it was my dream. And as they're currently underperforming, could I meet expectations? So I promised them I would. But they only want me to qualify for the Europa League. And that's because Arsenal are currently only 10th in the table, but they're just four points away from the top four. However, they've only finished in the top four twice in the last five seasons. And this year, they don't have any European football, but that could work to our advantage as we just solely focus on getting into the top four. So I told them I will qualify for the Champions League. So whilst I am now dreaming of managing Arsenal, taking the job at Medellin has kind of lost its charm. So I'm going to reject it. Either we get the Arsenal job or we just wait for something else a bit further down the line. So thankfully, Arsenal did offer me the job and I'm now the Arsenal manager. But I don't understand how this Arsenal side is doing so poorly because the team is incredible. We're gonna play Mikey Moore on the left-hand side of the attack as an inverted winger. Max Quelch Walls might just be the best striker I have ever seen in Football Manager. And if he's not scoring, Ezio on the right wing as an inside forward is surely going to get us plenty of goals. And so in our first game, Max scored a brace in a 3-0 win at Southampton. But he couldn't score at home as we lost 2-1 against Bournemouth, who scored the winner in the 96th minute. And we only drew 1-1 with Norwich because Martinelli scored a penalty. So whilst the team does look very good on paper, it's very inconsistent. So we need to replicate our League Cup form in the Premier League because in the League Cup, we have just made the final. But before we get to that final, we had a huge 2-1 win over Liverpool with Ezio scoring the decisive goal in the second half. And we also beat Everton 1-0 at their place, which I know to you and me right now doesn't sound that impressive, but Everton are the current title holders of the Premier League. So in between the League Cup semi-finals and final, we picked up 14 points from a possible 21, but we only improved to eighth in the league with 10 games to go. So whilst it isn't important in the grand scheme of the challenge, beating Wolves in the League Cup final might be our only route into European football next season. So thankfully, Max Quelch Wolves scored within 40 seconds of kickoff and then we scored a second before 120 seconds had even been played. So the cup was won within the first two minutes of the game, and at least we now have Conference League football next season. But we also have 10 more league games to try and get more. Finally, it seemed like the team was gelling with the new tactics, as we beat Spurs 3-1, Chelsea 2-0 at Stamford Bridge, and absolutely tore apart Man City to beat them 4-1 thanks to a wonderful Mikey Moore goal. We did drop points in draws to Sunderland and Fulham, but we crucially beat West Ham 7-0, which gave us the goal difference to finish third in the table ahead of both Everton and Spurs, thanks to our superior goal difference. Mostly scored by Max, the league's top scorer. So now we have 75 million pounds to spend on a Champions League campaign. The issue is anyone who's good enough to improve our team to take it to the next level 
is insanely expensive. Take Newcastle centre-back Santiago Garro. He's worth at least 135 million. And to make matters worse, the board won't send me on my final coaching course because they think it will lead to me taking a job somewhere else. That is a red flag to me. If they don't want to help me improve as a manager to help their team win, I am more likely to want to leave the club. Back to our issue of not having enough transfer budget to sign superstars for the team, I sold £72 million worth of players in order to spend a huge 95 million on Gaetan Sop to lead our midfield. But as we spent big on him, we could only afford to bring in a few squad players. So winning the Champions League this season might be a bit of a stretch with our small squad. But in the grand scheme of things, our draw could have been a lot worse. So I think we should be able to qualify. We opened up our campaign with a 5-0 win over Ajax, with Zhao Nebo scoring the pick of the goals. Ezio then scored our second in an impressive 2-0 win in Milan against Inter. And of course, Max Quelch Wolves got in the goals as we beat Wolfsburg 4-0. But a 1-1 draw against Villarreal, a 3-3 draw with Barcelona, and a 1-0 loss to Manchester United means we sit seventh in the new league phase table. That's set to be implemented in real life next season with just two games to play. Finish in the top eight and we go straight through to the round of 16 and miss the playoff round. As for the Premier League, we'd had a superb start to the season, winning all but three games. It means that a third of the way through the season, we're only behind Manchester United on goal difference in what's shaping up to be a title battle. But we have a tough month coming up, including a match away at United. Now the good news is, we beat United 1-0 as they had a lapse in their back line. But the bad news is we lost 2-1 at home against Man City and 2-1 at home against Brentford of all teams. So actually, both us and United fell behind Chelsea who had a great month. But obviously our focus is the Champions League, so as long as we just finish in the top four in the Premier League, that's fine by me. Speaking of which, in our final two games in the league phase, we beat AEK Athens 2-0 away from home, but frustratingly could only draw with Lyon as they scored two late goals. So as a result, we only finish ninth in the league phase and have to go through an extra knockout round. We've been drawn against Villarreal, who we drew with in the league phase. But when it matters, we can turn on the style, traveling to their place and winning the first leg 3-0. Then, thanks to goals from Max Quelch Wolves and Mikey Moore, as well as an own goal from the Villarreal keeper, we came away 3-1 winners in the second leg to progress. However, in the round of 16, we were drawn against Manchester United, who got revenge on us for beating them in the league by beating us 1-0 at our place in the first leg, despite us having tripled the amount of shots. In the second leg, they opened up the scoring 10 minutes into the game, but we did manage to pull one back early in the second half. However, pound for pound, United are still the better team overall. So they scored a second on the night to win the tie 3-1 and knock us out the Champions League. So once again, all we have to focus on is the Premier League. And with 11 games to go, we're just ahead of Newcastle on goal difference. We won some crucial games. Notably, we recorded a huge 3-0 win over Chelsea to knock them out of the title race and got revenge on Manchester United as we beat them 5-2 at home. But we could only draw against our biggest rivals for the title, Newcastle. So as a result, we head into the final game of the season two points behind the Magpies. But we're going to need a miracle from Bournemouth to stop Newcastle at St James's Park if we want to win the title. Max Quelch Wolves almost gave us an early lead with a spectacular effort, but it was just over the crossbar. And at the same time, Newcastle took the lead in their game. Just over half an hour into our match, we then hit the post. If we can't score, it doesn't really matter what Newcastle do. But luckily for us, we finally found a way through as the smallest man on the pitch, Joao Neves, scored a header to give us the lead going into the break. The issue is, Newcastle are still winning. We had the chance to extend our lead as Mikey Moore was brought down in the penalty area, but Max had his effort saved and Preston kept themselves in the game. But really, it didn't matter if we scored or missed because Newcastle were running riot 
and had gone 4-1 up in their game to put any chance of us winning the title to bed. So in the end, it is a trophyless season here at Arsenal, but I think we have made some progress. However, I think a better job has just become available. AC Milan have just sacked their manager as they underperformed in third place after winning two of the last five Scudettos. But crucially, they lost in the Champions League semi-final, which is way further than we got. So maybe we've got a better chance of winning the Champions League if we jump ships to go to Milan. So I decided to apply for the job. And literally an entire month after I applied, I was offered an interview. Their main concern is that I don't speak Italian. But given I can now basically speak five languages at this stage, I told them I'd be able to learn. Then of course, they were concerned I hadn't managed in Italy before, so I said the line and told them it was my dream. Then in a throwback to our days in Africa and Asia, they asked me if I was able to work with limited resources, which is very surprising given their wage bill is actually bigger than Arsenal's. But I told them I was the perfect man for the job and they thought so too. So I am now the AC Milan manager. Let's just ignore that for now, shall we? So after joining the club, I now realize what the board meant by financial issues, as we're 50 million in the red and have zero transfer budget. Luckily, the team is very good. Mayo Goncalves is an incredible striker and perhaps even better than Max at Arsenal. But he's also going to be fed by one of the best playmakers I've ever seen in football manager, Reno Carazzole. So I think we should be able to manage with the players that we've got. And we certainly came out of the block strong, as we beat title rivals Juventus 3-1, Goncalves scoring two of the goals to lay down an early benchmark in Serie A. But despite all our firepower, we just couldn't find a way past teams like Torino. But of course, our ultimate prize is the Champions League. But we've been given one of the most difficult draws possible. Get through this and we certainly have title credentials. Bayern Munich came to visit and opened up the scoring in the 27th minute. But before the half-time whistle was blown, we had replied with three of our own goals, courtesy of Oscar Gluck, a Bayern Munich own goal, and of course, Goncalves. However, the Bavarians then replied with two of their own in the second half, tying the game 3-3. But fortunately, wingback Miguel Leopoldo scored the decisive goal for us to win the match. It was certainly a more entertaining game than the 0-0 we had with Borussia Dortmund. Astana was a much more routine game as we pounced on a defensive error to open up the scoring, slotting away a penalty, and then scoring a banger to win the match 3-0 but we did have to rely on a heavy deflection to beat Porto 1-0 to win that game. But then the wheels came off against both the Madrid sides. Atletico found a way past us twice to win 2-0, whereas Real left it until the 86th minute to score and beat us 1-0. All of this leaves us 16th in the table with two games to go, but we should have just about done enough to qualify. As for Serie A though, we had been incredible. Oscar Gluck scored in the 88th minute to beat our city rivals 1-0 on derby day, whilst we also beat last season's champions Napoli 3-1 as we ran riot. Another clutch moment was when we scored in the 90th minute to beat Sassuolo 1-0 away from home, but we also had the occasional huge win to show the league that we mean business. As a result, we're top of the Serie A table at Christmas and are cruising towards the title. However, we do have a very big financial issue. The club is now in significant debt and it's all because we're paying seven players over £400,000 a week. We need to improve the team, especially defensively, but we just can't do that because we're paying out so much money to some, at this stage, quite old players. So we are going to have to start selling. So in January, I managed to get rid of three of our older players who were playing more rotational roles, but were on huge contracts. Even after selling them, we still couldn't afford to bring in new players right now. 
but we had freed up a whole load of wage budget for next season. So over the next six months, I'm going to start tapping up players who have got contracts expiring at the end of the season to see if they want to move to us on a free. But if we can also get far in the Champions League, we might just be able to have a small amount of transfer budget next season to do some business. So it was great that we managed to beat Luzerne 2-0 and then won our final league phase game against FC Copenhagen by the exact same scoreline, which means we finish in a respectable 11th place. In the playoff rounds, we've been drawn against Hoffenheim. And in the first leg, we opened up the scoring inside of five minutes. Then with 10 minutes on the clock, we doubled our lead thanks to Goncalves and then won the game with a third at the start of the second half. A 1-1 draw in the second leg, Caesars progressed to the round of 16, where we're up against the reigning champions Barcelona. We had the perfect start to the game, as Goncalves opened up the scoring in the 7th minute, and he grabbed a second in the 15th minute. But the longer the game went on, the more Barcelona grew into it, showing us why they're the reigning champions, scoring three times to win the first leg 3-2. We managed to make it 3-3 on aggregate with an early goal in Barcelona. But soon after, Barca scored one of their own. So it looked like we were going to get knocked out of the competition. But in the 96th minute, we scored a last gasp goal to take the game to extra time, where we were the more clinical of the two sides, scoring to win 4-1 on the night and 6-4 on aggregate. Our challenge in the quarterfinals was Chelsea, and the first leg was the easiest of our knockout campaign so far. We scored three times in the first 20 minutes to win in the San Siro 3-0. But at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea scored twice inside of 25 minutes, which made us start to sweat at 3-2 on aggregate. However, two goals before half-time was enough to alleviate our fears and for AC Milan to make back-to-back -back Champions League semi-finals, where we're taking on Borussia Dortmund, who we drew 0-0 with in the league phase, and they took the advantage in the first leg, scoring twice in the first half to take the lead. We did pull a goal back quickly in the second half, but Dortmund scored a deserved third goal late on to win the first leg. At our place, it was the total opposite though, as Goncalves scored a great goal early on, and we then made it two to level the scores up on aggregate. But then Dortmund scored midway in the second half to take back the advantage, meaning we had to fight on again and then score a third on the night to make it 4-4 on aggregate. But as the game looked to head to extra time, Dortmund broke our hearts, scoring the winner in the 91st minute making it 5-4 on aggregate. So close, yet so far. But we will get another shot at the Champions League next season, potentially as Italian champions. Although we had slipped a few times in our second half of the season, when we played against our closest rivals, we did win, doing the double over Inter Milan, beating Juventus 2-1, and demolishing Fiorentina 4-1 at our place to sit on top of the table, five points clear, with two games to go. A win at home against Udinese would be enough for us to lift the title. And six minutes into the game, Ruben Ribeiro gave us the lead with a scintillating dribble and finish. We then had a chance to score a second as the referee pointed to the spot as Ribeiro went down and was able to convert his second of the game, giving us a two goal lead from 21 shots in the first half. Goncalves also wanted in on the action but his free kick went over the crossbar. But he did manage to get one with 10 minutes to go, pressuring the Udinese defense, winning the ball and slotting home our third of the match to claim the Serie A title for AC Milan. So with the right additions to the team, I think next season we're in with a superb chance of winning the Champions League. Despite being 132 million pounds in debt, the board had managed to find 23 million pounds to give us as transfer budget. Plus, we can spend 100% of whatever we make from sales. So we aren't going to be signing any major superstars. But remember those free transfers I was talking about? Well, I've been able to bring two of them into the club. Our new deep line playmaker, Emmanuel Clavery, should be able to provide us with plenty of assists. 
And our new ball winning midfielder, Pedro Henrique, was part of the Barcelona squad that we beat in the Champions League last season. We also managed to sell a few older players on big wages to bring in more squad players and a new starting centre back in Edo. I think we'll just probably stick to Edo with this one, I think. But while he may lack a little bit technically, he is superb physically and mentally. So I think the team is better than when we joined. And the team was already great when we joined the club. So I've got a great feeling about this season. But we've been given a pretty tough start. And we only earned a point at Roma thanks to them scoring an own goal. But luckily for us, our backup striker and inside forward Fabian Ladino scored a brace against Napoli on our way to a 3-0 victory, whilst Ruben Ribeiro scored a wonderful goal and picked up an assist on our way to a 2-1 win over Juventus. So we're in good shape as we head into the Champions League, where our first game is against Borussia Dortmund, who ended up winning the competition last season after beating us in the semis. The rest of our draw is way kinder than last season. However, Borussia Dortmund dented our hopes by showing us why they're the champions in a 1-0 win. This had a knock-on effect as we could only draw with Galatasaray and Wolfsburg. But we did manage wins against Sevilla, Goncalves scored a late goal against Bayer Leverkusen to win 1-0, and Portuguese Ribeiro scored past Benfica to win that game 1-0 as well. But with two games to go, we're only 12th in the table and we want to be in the top eight. So it was a good job we absolutely battered Basel 4-0 with Goncalves and Reno getting themselves on the score sheet and we followed it up with a 5-0 win over Hoffenheim with Ladino and Ido picking up the goals. But annoyingly, it only pushes us up to 11th place in the table, meaning if we want to win the Champions League, we've got to do it the hard way. Serie A, by the way, is going swimmingly. Although we have lost a few games to big rivals in Inter Milan and Napoli, our sheer amount of wins keeps us on top of the table by a single point. Back to the Champions League, and luckily for us, we've been drawn against Basel in the playoff round, who we just battered. So we did it again with a 3-1 win away from home as Goncalves scored two of the goals before we repeated the scoreline at our place as Ladino scored the pick of the bunch in order for us to progress. A week later in the round of 16, we had the much more difficult challenge of Newcastle United. The Saudis scored first at our place and looked in control of the game. But 20 minutes from time, centre-back Koulibaly headed home from a corner. So with the game tied heading into the second leg, this time we scored first as we pressurised the Newcastle back line. But shortly afterwards, they equalised to make things 2-2 at the end of 90 minutes, meaning we're going to extra time. But the clutch king himself, Goncalves, scored in the 112th minute to silence the home crowd, meaning we're going to the quarterfinals, where we're up against our former team, Arsenal. If we win, we know we've made the right choice in leaving the Gunners to move to Milan. But if we lose, I'd rather not talk about that, to be fair. I just, I really hope we don't lose. So on my return to the Emirates, I knew we'd be facing a very good team. But we opened up the scoring in the first half, before then doubling our lead in the second to win the game 2-0, despite Arsenal arguably being the stronger of the two sides. So in the second leg, we went defensive, and it paid off. A 0-0 draw takes us to another Champions League semi-final, and it justifies us leaving Arsenal to join AC Milan. This season, we have to contend with Manchester United, who of course knocked us out of the Champions League when we were at Arsenal. So now we could reach the final and get revenge on them knocking us out. Well, it certainly looked like we were going to get revenge when we raced into a two goal lead at the San Siro. But 15 minutes from time, United pulled a goal back. Despite dominating the match, we only won 2-1. Luckily for us though, the second leg was going brilliantly. The only hiccup was when our left back picked up a second yellow card in the 88th minute and was sent off. Still, we should be able to survive for two more minutes, right? Well, United used the free kick to score a last gasp equaliser, which eventually led to the game going to penalties. We stepped up first and Reno Carazzole slotted home his spot kick, but United were also able to score their first goal as well. 
So we kept the pressure on as Ladino scored our seconds before Coita sent our keeper the wrong way, but hit the post. This then allowed us to take a 3-1 lead as Clavery also scored. The pressure was piling on the Manchester United players and it was all too much for Ibarra who put his kick wide. So now we just need Popovic to score and send us to the final. Now as the former Arsenal manager, we cannot lose this Champions League final. That's because we're facing off against Tottenham Hotspur for a chance to complete leg four of the Pentagon Challenge. However, we're playing this game in London at Wembley. So it's basically a home game for Spurs, and as a result, the first half was incredibly cagey with just three shots in the first 20 minutes. But finally, the first highlight fell in our favor. A poor pass by Spurs was intercepted, and with a little bit of luck, our ball forward fell to Ruben Ribeiro, who was never going to miss from that position. Eight minutes later, and we had another chance down the left-hand side, and the cross was almost turned into the back of the net by one of Spurs' players. But with the resulting corner from the near side, Ribeiro found Ido at the far post, who rose like a salmon and gave us our second goal of the night. But just before half-time, Ribeiro, who had been one of the best players on the pitch, fouled a Spurs attacker on the edge of the area. Would it be a penalty? It's going to VAR. And VAR says no penalty. I feel like we have really escaped with one there. So at half-time, we are deservedly 2-0 up. And 21 seconds into the second half, we had a chance to kill the game off, but the shot cannon back off the post and away to safety. This then allowed Spurs to grow into the game, and their striker Nunes was put clean through on goal, but his shot summed up the Tottenham performance. But they just would not let up, and they kept pushing for a goal, and thanks to some questionable defending at the back from us, they finally pulled one back. However, we didn't let the goal rattle us. We shut the game down, and the clock ticked away until the ref finally blew the full-time whistle and we'd won the Champions League title with AC Milan, winning our fourth continental trophy in the Pentagon Challenge. Now, we just have South America to go on our final step of the quest to ultimate glory. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not so already to be alerted as soon as that video goes live, as we're about to go down as one of the greatest managers of all time.